Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 22nd of October and the time has just gone 12.02 British summer time. Uh, this Monday morning, uh, equity markets in Europe are, are in positive territory. We had a very big rally in Asia overnight. Uh, the Chinese stock markets closed up over 4%. Um, the Beijing authorities have brought in some temporary changes to the tax laws and that actually can really spurred on uh, the buying that, that, that um, uh, in, in the buying overnight, uh, but only a small bit of that um, positive sentiment in Asia overnight has actually spilled over into Europe. Uh, with Italy remains in focus. Um, the Italian government are still are still keen to press ahead and actually increase their budget deficit. Uh, this has obviously gone down too well in Brussels. Moody's have come out and actually um, downgraded a, a, a Italy's uh, debt rating to one notch above junk status. Uh, um, so this is actually a, a bit concerning. But uh, the good news is, actually, in the same update, Moody's also um, update, upgraded their outlook to stable from negative. So investors aren't actually too worried about about the uh, the, the downgrade because of the uh, because of the upgrade to the actual out, the, the, the the forward guidance, the uh, the outlook. So traders aren't overly uh, aren't overly concerned about the, pro- the prospect of future downgrades in the near term. So it's a bit of a it, Overall, it's a bit positive for the Italian story, but Italy is is a uh, is not out of the woods yet. Uh, so we're seeing a bit of a positive start here in, in Europe. It's 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 a fairly quiet day in terms of both corporate stories and also economic indicators. So we fairly it's likely likely to see fairly uh, light volatility uh, in terms of the currency market as well. Taking a look ahead at the week ahead, uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cfcmarkets.com and under news and analysis. Uh, you'll find the week ahead article. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have first half figures from Whitbread. On Wednesday, we have the Bank of Canada interest rate decision, and it's widely expected that we're going to see a rate hike from the Bank of Canada. On Wednesday, we have the the flash PMI reports um, from both France and, and Germany for October. Uh, on Wednesday, we have uh, first quarter results from Microsoft, and we also have third quarter. Uh, and, and and on Thursday, we have third quarter results from Twitter. Uh, on Thursday, we also have the ECB meeting. Now, obviously, this is the situation in Europe at the moment. Uh, the European Central Bank are keen to wind down their, their bond buying scheme at the end, at the end of this year. Uh, at, at the same time, the um, Brussels kind of standoff on Italy is probably going to be a big issue in relation to uh, in relation to the kind of the European story and the Eurozone story in the near term. On uh, Friday, we have third quarter GDP figures from the US, and also on Friday we have third quarter figures from Royal Bank of Scotland. So take a look now at some of the major markets and see what they've, what they've been up to. Equity markets, broadly speaking, volatility has, has dropped off uh, compared to, say, two weeks ago when we were at that major sell-off. But the, and we have seen, some markets have seen a, a bit of recovery uh, in the last number of trading sessions, but we're still well off the, the highs that we're in, I'd say, at the, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the month or at the levels that we saw in September. So taking a look here at the, uh, the FTSE 100, as you're saying here, we endured a major sell-off uh, in kind of the early part of October, and the bulk of last week we just saw the markets kind of r- drop, completely drop off in terms of volatility and actual trading ranges. But then again, we're, we're still there's still a small bit of fear there. Uh, as, at the same time, the markets really haven't recovered, have have, have have only recovered some of the ground that they've lost. So we're still very much in this downward trend. Uh, in, the, in the near term, what we're seeing is the market has been pushing higher, and we've seen a steady decline in negative momentum. So the decline in negative momentum is confirming the upward move um, that we're seeing in the market, but we're still very much uh, below the 200 moving average, this red line here, which comes to play at 7,458. And while we, we, remain, we remain south of it, it's likely that the outlook is going to, is going to, going to continue to remain negative. If we do happen to kind of push to the upside um, on, on the uh, on the FTSE 100, we could look to retest this region here in around the 7,250 area. Now, now as low as say 7,220, 7,250. This area here could be an area of potential of resistance if we do see a squeeze higher. And if the market actually does manage to actually kind of push lower again and drive back below 7,000, back below the recent lows of uh, say 6,923, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here at 6,839. Take a look now what's going on over in Germany with the DAX. Similar situation here whereby the DAX, the volatility has, uh, has, has, has dropped off, but we're still very much in the, in the downward trend. Uh, if, if, if you draw a, a trend line 
between the highs of June and the highs of July and also through the highs of September, um, we would see a fairly cl classic example of, low, of lower highs. We've also seen, broadly speaking, lower lows as well. Um, granted, we have we, we are off the lows of last week, but that really still doesn't, doesn't really uh, do, do much do much for us. We're still very much below that, that trend line. We're still well below the 20 moving average, so we, we could see a continuation of the negative trend uh, continue for the DAX. And if you look, look to continue, if you do look, look to continue, continue in a downward trend and take out the uh, the recent uh, the recent lows of just above 11,400. We could then be taking us back down towards the kind of lows of the level, say, 11,000. Granted, that might be some way away, but it would be the next kind of big psychological number to keep an eye out, keep an eye out for. If you manage to push higher here, I'm going to take out the uh, the last week's high of um, just saying around the kind of 11,650 area in this area here. The next big area to keep an eye for would be 12,000. It's a big psychological number, and if you go north of 12,000, then keep an eye for this area here, this trend line re resistance. Which would come into play in around the 12,180 region. Take a look now at what's going over in the US. Actually, take a quick look at the Italian market first of all, seeing as it at least seems to be uh, in, in focus. This, to give you an indication of how, how negative things are, the Italian market only on Friday uh, fell, fell, to, fell to a level that wasn't seen since February 2017. So to give you an indication just how bearish things are over, over in Italy, it's been a classic example of, of a downward trend in recent months, with a steady, a steady series of lower lows and lower highs. Granted, we are a bit higher today, but we're still nowhere near, uh, nowhere near kind of recovery mode. While we were in south of this area here, 20,000, a big, big psychological number, it's, it's, it's likely that we could see further pain and pressure on the Italian market. And if we do drop back below, 19,000 and also the recent uh, back below the recent lows of 18,755. We could be looking back at, at now towards this area here, uh, 11 not seen since uh, February 20, uh, 2017, back down towards the 18,615 region. Taking our attention now over to the US, what's going over on the Dow Jones? So the Dow Jones, as I said, as, as, um, has managed to kind of give back, give back some of the some of the uh, some of the grounds it made last week. So we, had, we obviously had the sell off, and we saw a steady increase in negative momentum. The market's been pushing higher, broadly speaking, for the last week or so. But we've also seen a fairly steady decline in negative momentum. So things are looking a bit on the on, on the more positive side over on on, on, the, on the Dow Jones. This red line here, the trending moving average, which comes to play at twenty five thousand one hundred and sixty three. Why would we remain above that region? It's possible that we could see further, um, further buying, um, further, um, further upward moves on the Dow, on the Dow Jones. It's also worth noting that you know we're not too far away. Even if we do dip below it, we could find support coming to play at 25,000. It's a big psychological number. And then also keep in mind the recent low uh, wasn't too far away from there either. It was 24,897. So this entire area, the kind of zone, say between the trend moving average. At, 25,163, 25,000 to be kind of psychological level, and also the recent uh, the recent October low of 24,897. So that's that that region there will, will potentially be a bit bigger of support. And if you do take off the uh, the recent October low at 24,897, that would be quite, quite 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 worrying, and we could see further losses. And if you do see if you do continue to continue to push on lower from there, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here. If you draw a trend line between the lows of, Jan of, um, of February, um, of April, and also of May, we can see that there's a trend line coming into play here. And if you do take out the recent October low, we could be like heading back down towards the trend line, which takes us back down to somewhere in the region of 24,350. If you do manage to kind of push on higher from here, uh, these levels on the, on the Dow Jones, keep an eye for this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play just above 26,000. And notice how it did actually manage to act as support on a couple of occasions recently, and if it's actually a support in the past, it makes it more likely that that metric could act uh, could be important in the future as well. Taking a look now at the Nasdaq 100, similar looking shape to the chart of the Nasdaq 100, uh, whereby the market itself um, we had the major sell-off, we've had some bit of a bounce back, but the market has been drifting lower again. And uh, similar to the Dow Jones, we, we're in a, a general area of potentially uh, important support air, support prices. So keep an eye on the Dow Jones on the Nasdaq 100 here. 
Uh, this red line here is the Trinity moving average, uh, which comes into play at 7,072. 7, we are holding above that area for the time being, and obviously 7,072 um, isn't too far away from 7,000, big psychological number. And then below that again is the what is the the October low of seven thousand sorry six thousand eight hundred and ninety. So this entire region here could act uh, potentially give you areas of of support for the for the uh, for the Nasdaq one hundred. If you do look, if you while we do hold above this region here, uh, we should see the Nasdaq one hundred move higher. And if we do move move, move on higher on the Nasdaq one hundred, we could be looking heading back up towards this yellow line here, the fifty one hundred moving average. Which comes into play at 7,354. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking back up towards 7,500. But if you do break below this area here, um, the October low at 6,890, we could be looking heading back down towards the May low of 6,823. Take a look now at what's going on over in the commodity space. So, gold, after a fairly uninteresting number of months, has actually managed to actually break higher. Uh, we saw a decent enough move here on, on the gold market in, in early October, and ever since then it's been once again back in a fairly, uh, a fairly, a fairly narrow, uh, a fairly narrow trading range. But nonetheless, uh, at least we actually have some sort of break to the upside. What we could be looking at in gold here is we're, we're, we are spending a lot, of, a lot of time in around the 100 moving average, which comes into play at 12,000. Um, and, and, and 1024. So if you can manage to, to, to remain north of that, that, that metric there, we could be looking at retesting this area here in around 1236. And if you go beyond 1236, we could be looking at heading up to 1266. Uh, if you do see a, a fairly decent move to the downside, uh, and any kind of any, uh, move to the downside may find some support in this area here, this, this blue line here, the, the 50 day moving average, which also coincides, which is 1200, which is also coincides. Which is a very big uh, psychological number. And if you go if you go below so twelve thousand, we could be looking at heading back down towards this area here of around in around eleven eighty three. Take a look now what's going on over on Brent crude oil. Start off looking actually at a weekly chart. So the big trend uh, has been very much to the upside um, for Brent crude oil. But if you take a look here, if you look at the um, on a weekly chart. The, the week starting Saturday, the 6th of October, we can see here a classic example of a bearish engulfing here. So that's quite um, quite a, 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 negative, a negative sign. So we could be looking for a better re a reversal uh, in the price of Brent crude oil. So the market had moved lower last week and actually re re ever so slightly kind of in the red uh, at the beginning of this week as well. So given that, we've also had some very decent, um, fairly large um, supply numbers uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of inventories in the US recently. But also, given that, um, so that, that that's added to the setting of pressure and all, but also keep in mind, there's a lot of political certainty surrounding Saudi Arabia at, at the moment. Um, so it's it's unlikely that, that we'd see the price of oil just completely uh, sell off. But at the same time, we could see this kind of further downward pressure in the near term. So taking a look now at a daily chart. If you, if you do look, if, if the recent kind of negative move continues, we could be looking any back down towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at six, sorry, 78 spot 80. And if you go below that, we could be looking any back down towards this, this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes into play at 76 spot 84. Any moves to the upside, we could be looking, heading up towards 82.50. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking, heading up towards the $85 of our mark. Similar situation in WTI. So taking a look at, at WTI here, it's been selling off recently in, in the last say, couple of weeks. Fair bit of downward pressure, and actually it's fair to say that the move to the downside in WTI has been more more, more aggressive than that of uh, of Brent. If you look to continue to, in the, the most recent downward trend, we could be looking any back down towards. The 200 moving average, which comes into play just above 60, sorry, which comes into play at 67 spot 60. Notice how the 200 moving average did manage to act as support back here. So if it was a significant level in the past, it makes it more likely that it will be a significant significant level in the future. If you do look to actually bounce back at all in the, in the price of, uh, of WTI, keep an eye for these these moving averages here, the 50 moving average and the 100 moving average. And the 50 moving average comes into play at 70 spot 49, and the running moving average comes into play at just below that at 69 spot 89. And if you do have a sizable move to the upside in WTI, we could be looking heading back up towards the 72.50 region. 
taking a look now at euro dollar so we've seen some some, uh, some recent weakness again uh, in the euro uh, the, the wider downward trend that, that the euro has been in for a number of months could be looking um, could, could be looking as if we're going to fall back into that wider downward trend the volatility and and, rate and the trading rate has been fairly low recently but nonetheless it has been actually kind of steadily kind of grinding lower uh, since late September our back below the 50 moving average uh, which comes into play uh, in around in around the one spot 15.85 mark and while we remain south of that it's likely that we could see further pressure on the euro versus the US dollar what's also going to interesting is that we're currently at the kind of 115 area and 115 ticket 115 10 has been a fairly decent level a fairly significant level uh, in, in recent months and we're trading pretty much on that area at the moment but if we were to move firmly below that again that would actually suggest that we're, we're, we, we are heading lower and if we go south of that we could be like heading back down towards the kind of 113 area and if we do actually manage to kind of properly retake the, the 110 sorry 115 uh, 115 10 region if we have a size of a move above that we could be looking at heading back up towards the 11750 area and finally now pound versus the US dollar so sterling after a fairly decent sell-off between April and, uh, and August uh, has shown reasonable signs of actually looking at a some, somewhat a bit of a, a, a recovery so you can see example of a higher highs and higher lows although although it's fair to say well it's, it's, it's just plain true that the high of, of October failed to take off the high of, of, uh, of September but more most importantly we are well above the uh, the early October lows so why we, we remain above this line here the 50 moving average this blue line here which comes into play just above the kind of psychologically important 130 mark why we, we, we remain above that it's likely that the that they get a wider upper well let's say the upper trend for the last say five or six weeks in the pound versus the versus the US dollar is going to remain intact and if we do kind of continue to push on higher from here we could be looking at retesting the October high of in around the kind of one spot 3250 area and if we go beyond that we could be looking at heading, heading, heading up towards one spot 30 one spot 3472 uh any moves to the downside uh in, in pound dollar if you take off the the, the the lows of october we could be looking heading back down toward these areas here at one spot 28 28.95 and you go below that you could be looking back down towards one spot 2785 um just also we're pointing out on our trading platform regularly updated is our chart forum section and also our market insights section some of the upside updates that we do get posted to it to insights uh some of it gets posted to the news analysis section which just shows you where the week ahead article is and every single day the chart form is uh, is updated so a number of uh, different a number of different charts will be posted and we provide some commentary which way we think the price uh, buy some commentary uh on, on the price action uh if you have any comments on this video or any of the other videos we make here at cmc markets please feel free to leave a review on google reviews and that's all for me this week thank you very much